Happy Saturday, folks. The Real Captain Kirk here. We're live from One Bethlehem Plaza here on the 25th of January, 2025. It's moving at warp speed here. Again, we're about 62% done with uh, winter and about 38% to go. So hopefully that made everyone happy that either wants more winter or wants an early spring, which we're not going to have. Uh, for our farmer clients, again, look Monday. You'll get an email here on our Ag 2025 Ag Global Outlook, uh, U.S. and World. So again, that'll be in your inbox uh, on Monday. Uh, we'll move at warp speed here today. Uh, so we're looking at season-to-date snowfall here, 1 October through 18 January. Again, this is uh, last week's depiction, and then we'll show what happened here this week. You can see that uh, deep south historic snowstorm that went from uh, Texas all the way across to Florida into the coastal Carolina area. So some of the trends here, 130-year record event, obviously, for many areas there in Louisiana, the Panhandle of Florida with uh, 8, 9, 10, 11 inches of snow shattering their state all-time record of 4 inches before. And again, it's up over 8, 11 inches. So huge event here. Again, you can see here on the, some of the big totals uh, we saw in Alabama, about 11 inches. Uh, again, Florida there where they had uh, 9.8 inches uh, beat their old record in Milton. Uh, again, so 130-year record there. If we look at snow cover here this morning, again, the 25th of January, only about 37% of the country, but in weird spots, right? Again, Louisiana all the way to North Carolina. And the uh, northeast still pretty good covered with snow. Um, again, the, the low spots are going to be there in the north central U.S. They've not had much snow at all this year. And even the west is uh, way, way, way down. It looks like a lot only in the very, very high tips of the mountains. But again, way below last year. If we look at these trends here, these are 40-year snowfall trends by region. So the chart left there, upper left, is the northwest region. Uh, so it's going to just a snowfall index here across uh, many, many cities uh, in that area, but down 77%, uh, least in 35 years. Southwest, down 78% versus last year, least in 25 years. North Central down, states, down 23%, least in 23 years. Uh, big winners, South Central U.S., most in six, up about 29%. Uh, and the, the winner of all winners is the Southeast, obviously, with that big storm. Southeast, most in 14 years and uh, second most in over 40 years. Northeast, we, we had a great early start and then some, some little storms here, but we're still most in six years, uh, up 47% versus last year. We look at these uh, U.S. snowfall trends. So these bars show you where it's uh, more snow than last year, and that light blue line is just kind of a national snowfall index, adding up all the snow across all the major cities across the U.S. Our peak week was there in uh, early January, week ending the 11th of January was the most snow. Uh, and then the second most here was the uh, weekending here this past week, obviously, with the deep south storm. And then an uptick here. We're seeing uh, another big, huge surge here, potentially, uh, as we get into early February. So that might be the second or number one most snow so far this winter. So we'll see there in early February. It looks to be very stormy for sure. This is season-to-date snowfall. Again, kind of a snowfall index uh, around the world here. A uh, better view is probably this uh, trend versus last year. So these purples are all... 300% more snow than last year. So you see that big hole, snow hole there in the central part of the U.S. in the Iowa, Nebraska, Dakotas, Kansas. Um, you know, not doing too bad in the east, Ohio Valley, southeast, and again, parts of the west, not as much. We're officially in a weak La Nina. Again, Noah usually likes to have it classified for three months, so not entirely did that happen. But uh, again, so it's very weak at best. Uh, La Nina. And that's just simply the cooling of these equatorial Pacific waters here. But you can already see warming off of uh, Peru and Ecuador. Uh, so this may be a short-lived event, and that's kind of what we'll show here with the models. This is a cross-section across the uh, Pacific, equatorial Pacific, from uh, really west of Australia all the way through Hawaii, California, toward Ecuador, again at the equator. And again, it's going below the surface here up to about 1,500 feet below. So what we see here is all that much above average in the western part of the uh, Pacific and um, below average temperatures here in the eastern central part of the Pacific. But you see that little blob there at the end here of warming warming um, off of Ecuador and um, Peru. Uh, so again, it's uh, looking, this is how we can kind of tell that this is probably not a three-year La Nina like we had uh, a few years back. And again, if we look at the model guidance here, uh, two different versions here, but they all show us very, very short La Nina, maybe out of it here by March, or maybe even sooner, and just kind of in a negative neutral phase as we go through most of 2025 here. Uh, looking at flu, we've definitely have peaked here. So we've had a two-week decline now. So it peaked uh, late December, early January, and now we're uh, on our way down here. So it was a very, very late starting season because the fall was so warm, but uh, had a nice big, huge surge here. And it's a quick surge and plummet. Uh, so hopefully everybody's starting to feel better. Polar vortex won't make you feel better. It is retreating here. So we're getting our typical January thaw. It is very 
uh, climatologically statistical in the in the data sets that you do see a warming trend uh, usually in the latter week of January. We're definitely having that in the eastern half of the country here this this week. So a little bit of a thaw. But if we look at this polar vortex, you can see how it gets elongated and stretched here. That's scary when it does that. That means just a huge chunk is about to pull away and split one toward Siberia and one toward U.S. North America here. So this is what the model has been saying here for a few days now here. So we're going to get a thaw, but don't uh, don't look at February here. Look at last week world summer here. This was the frigid week, obviously. 11.6 cold in last year. Number one colds in 40 years. So we're just near historic cold for some of us. We were minus eight here in the Lehigh Valley of eastern PA. 81% dry in the last year, driest in 11, fifth driest in 40 years in terms of precip, but snowfall was up 66% and uh, 18th most in 40 years. Uh, very warm there in Europe, again, warm since 17 years. China took the real hot spot, number one hottest in 40 years. Uh, India also second hottest in 40 years. Maps inset left are the trends versus average. Again, getting a little bit of a thaw here this week, 26 Jan 1 Feb, but uh, still colder than last year. So 7.1 cold in the last year, 19th colds in 40 years, so kind of in the middle of the pack, uh, near average. Snowfall, again, up 252%, uh, 11th least in 40 years, so below average, but again, up a bit over last year. And the precip trends show just a hair drier, still 13th wettest. And a big blob in Texas uh, south there. Uh, fortunately, this will be a rainstorm and not a snowstorm, but uh, we'll see. It might be a little bit overdone here, but again, definitely looking like a stormier pattern setting up here. And good news for California, finally going to put out these fires with some rain and snow and high elevations here. So this will be the end of the fires here for a while. Uh, we still think the worst fire season in a decade uh, in California. So this is just going to be a temporary lull. Uh, through the winter here but again look at all that heavy snow in new mexico arizona that's uh, i haven't seen this all winter long so they'll they'll take it um, we look at the uh, next week here again you start to see signs of that polar vortex uh, invading the west and central this will be the coldest week the west has seen uh, all winter long for sure so uh, high demand for seasonal categories that they really haven't bought much of this year uh, that warming trend in the southeast don't get used to it because it looks like this is a uh, splitting toward the east as we go through the uh, first, second week of February. So overall, about 11.8 cold in the last year, coldest in 11 years, 10th colds in 40 years. Snowfall way up. This, again, should be a big week, 435% uh, over last year, most in 11 years, fifth most in 40 years, so much above average there. And rainfall, too, 95% wetter than last year, wettest in 39, second wettest in 40 years. So a very, very stormy pattern here. We'll see if that snow hole gets filled in in the Nebraska, Iowa, Kansas areas. Again, this is probably overdone, just assuming all precip would be snow, but definitely a snowy pattern uh, for that uh, central U.S. This will obviously spill east as we get into early February. If we look at the storm track here, you can see those temperatures were above zero and well into the 20s and 30s in Canada, and then they plummet into the negative 20s, negative 30s, probably going a lot colder than this is depicting uh, right now here. But uh, definitely see signs of that polar vortex uh, invading Canada and then the U.S. and uh, eventually into the east. Let me just aggregate all these trends here. So, again, be careful. It's a little bit of a mix of warm and cold blend, but you can see the theme is uh, the western central U.S. is definitely going to get colder. And again, that will spill east as we get toward the latter part of this uh, period. Uh, Eastern Europe uh, still remains very, very warm. Western Europe, uh, more seasonal but cool. And uh, again, precip maps since that left there. So a lot of above average rainfall here in the U.S., uh, a lot of that snowfall. So we look at the two-week two precipitation outlook here. Again, you can see uh, wet across the, the Americas and down in south in Brazil where there are crops in the ground. They'll definitely take it. Looks like a pretty wet period uh, down in South America as well. So, folks, have a great week, and we will be back here again this time next week.